In today's video, we talk about why you shouldn't do any of this to your personal BMW. Hey everybody and welcome back to Tens of Motorsports. For those who are new, this is my 2001 330CI. Now it has been completely uh, ruined at this point. And I say that from the standpoint of what a BMW is supposed to be to what this car is now. And we'll get into both of those points later. This car right here has a Active Auto Work Stage 2 Supercharger Kit. It has the upgraded pulley. We are running about 400 horsepower and it weighs about 2,800 pounds. Now those two things right there, the supercharger and the weight reduction, make a really big difference on this car, but everything added together has made this car almost undrivable on the street. I have fully adjustable coilovers, I have fixed back racing seats, a racing steering wheel, and basically what this has done to this car is make it so that when you're driving it on the street, it's kind of not very fun anymore. But before we get into the rest of that, if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe, like the video if you're enjoying this content, and if you want me to continue to make this kind of stuff. I've loved building this car, and a lot of my content on my channel is about this 330 race car. We're gonna be doing more projects in the future. If you wanna stay tuned to that, just make sure to subscribe. Now, a BMW originally is supposed to be, back when this was new, the ultimate driving machine. They've changed their thing now to, to something kind of more boring, but back when this was new it was the ultimate driving machine and what that meant to me was especially in a car like this was not only the way that it felt on the road but the way that it made you feel uh, this car has always made me feel very confident very safe and it has always made me want more of it and what i've done to the car now has made it well quite frankly pretty unsafe removing a bunch of the airbags and making it a lot faster than it used to be. This car gives me a lot of confidence. Not too much. Actually, it, it gives me way more than it used to, but the car can handle more confidence than it gives me. So before where my confidence level and the car's abilities were kind of matched, now the car is kind of way up here and I've come up some, but it's just still not at the same level. So I guess, the lack of safety that the car has now has been put onto me where I'm not driving it to its fullest extent all the time, which you wouldn't be able to do on the street anyways. This car can take corners so much faster than it used to be able to. In order for you to hit its limits of grip and abilities on the street, you'd be going so far over the speed limit, it's not even funny. And that gets us into driving it on the street. Obviously on the track, this thing's fantastic and we'll get to some of those points later, but on the street, this car is noisy, hot when it's hot outside, cold when it's cold outside. It's very bumpy. It gets a lot of sometimes unwanted attention. I think that if I broke down on the side of the road with this car, I'd probably get more pictures and people honking and, and, and looking at the car more so than if you had a, a Ferrari broken down on the side of the road. And that's cool, but at the same time, it's, it's kind of, when you, if you're trying to just kind of blend in and drive around a little bit and have some fun, this is not the car to do that in. So it's funny when people say, oh, that car looks really nice because it's, it's cool looking, but it's, it's not a nice car in any way. And I think the best way to describe this, and I've tried several ways of, of making this analogy, but it's kind of like if you've ever played any sports or done any hobbies where you have to put on like safety gear. So I ride dirt bikes. And so we're, I'm going to compare this to putting on your safety gear when you're riding your dirt bike. I suit up completely when I ride on my dirt bike. I've seen too many people get hurt. And so I ride with helmet, goggle, boots, jersey, pants, that kind of stuff. This car is very similar to like putting on a pair of boots. You put them on and at first it's like, yeah, you know, it's real tight and it feels really good. And then you go out and you go riding. And then when you come back, when you finally take your helmet off, or your boots off, it's kind of like this huge like weight off of you. It's like, whew. Man, I didn't realize how tight those boots actually were, how uncomfortable it was until you took them back off. Because when you first put them on, it feels pretty good. You're all excited, you're all pumped. Okay, I'm gonna go dirt biking. And so you put on all your gear, and then when you're done with it, you're like, okay, that really wasn't as comfortable as I thought it was. And it's kind of the same thing with this. When you first get in, you get all strapped in, you're like, yeah, this feels great. It's all nice and tight. And by the time you're done driving around, even just a little bit, you're like exhausted. And getting into another car is like sitting 
on a stone step versus sitting on a really nice like lazy boy chair. So it was a little bit funny to compare it like that, but that's kind of the best way I can think of to, to talk about how the car feels when you're in it versus uh, when, you're, when you're done with your drive. And that's one of the reasons really why I invested in an enclosed trailer and a winch is so I can get the car into the trailer. There's other reasons for that. If the car broke down, then I could get it back home. But if you drive this to the track, by the time you get there, you're tired. And then you drive on the track and then you go home, you're just completely exhausted. And obviously that's not the safest thing to be driving. Like I said, the car's hot when it's hot outside. It's cold when it's cold outside. So there's just no protection from the elements almost, except for your windshield. And that's why I bought that enclosed trailer. And that's also why I don't think that if you've got a BMW and you're wanting to build a race car, you should really think about some of these things because they start to add up and it gets really intense really fast, especially doing an interior strip on this car. So I've lost about 550 pounds out of the car and there's no sound deadening, nothing. So all the noise a car produces comes right back inside the cab. Now on the track, this thing's an absolute monster. It's, it's just, I don't even know how to explain it. And mounting a GoPro won't show what it feels like. It's, it's incredible. Again, we're gonna go back to a sports and a hobby analogy. Um, I wrestled in high school. So when I was wrestling, I remember that when you're out on the mat, everything else goes quiet. Uh, some of the other team members had talked about this and I didn't realize it at first until I remember one time looking over at my coach and he was just, I could see that he was just screaming as, as loud as he could, but I, I couldn't hear anything. And that's kind of how this car is on the track. Once you're all suited up, you get your helmet on and everything like that, you're out on the track, everything else goes away. All those bumps and creaks and noises and rattles and shakes, all of it completely disappears. And you can get a little taste of that out on the street, but you have to have like an open road where you're able to go fairly quickly and it's still difficult to get into that zone, but when you're on the track, it, it just is like completely, it's like a switch. It just, everything goes completely quiet. And that's the kind of undescribable feelings that, that owning a race car can get you. I remember coming back to the pits and my hands were just shaking. My, my legs were shaking so bad I couldn't run the clutch. I couldn't hardly turn my toggle switches off uh, when I finally got back to the pits. Um, the first couple times I started racing and I'd still get that adrenaline rush But it's not quite that intense is the point I couldn't control the car if you have a second car and you really want to do this and absolutely if this is your only car Just I don't do most of this <laughs> Because you're just gonna end up not wanting to drive it And if that pushes you to buy a second car if you modify your daily driver so much You're like, okay This is becoming something that I don't want to daily drive and you buy something else if that's your motivation to get some finally get something else so you have two cars then Absolutely, I, I would say it at that point, but for just the average day person, this is a really bad idea. And the only reason I did this is because I picked up the car for so cheap and I did end up having a second vehicle. I'm not sure how many people know, but I picked the car up for about 1500 bucks. The initial plan was to flip it because it was worth about four at the time. I couldn't get anybody to bite on it and I just kept adding to it and adding to it and adding to it and here we are today. So if you're looking at building something like this, I have a huge playlist on all of the builds and upgrades we've done to this. I'll make sure to have that linked so everybody can find that if you want to. Thanks so much for watching. This video was made in part because I had a lot of comments and questions about this topic. So if you have a comment or question about a complicated topic that takes a little bit more than me just replying back a paragraph, make sure to leave them in the comment section below. I will probably make a video on it if it is a good topic and it is something that I think that other people should know about. I've had several sit down videos where I just kind of talk about the car and this is one of them. This is something that I've been wanting to talk about for a long time. Basically this, what I've done to this car has ruined the ultimate driving machine. It's made it a fantastic track monster, whatever other label you want to put on it. But as a daily driven street ultimate driving machine, it's definitely lost what it used to be originally. And that can be good and that can be bad. And that's really up to you what you think you want to build with your car. Thanks everybody so much for watching. Subscribe if you are new. Hit the like button if you enjoyed today's content and you want me to continue to make videos like this. Leave any comments or questions down in the comment section below. Also make sure to check us out on Instagram, tens underscore motorsports. And also make sure to check out our Patreon linked in the description below. Loads more content to come. This car is nowhere near being completed. So stay tuned. We'll see everybody in the next video.